I usually had slides with some interesting facts at these developer events. I want to try something different this year, so this is on purpose. And we can, we can compare the videos. I've been on a very long journey, and I do believe that starting there without making it boring is actually right, because the most important thing, the best thing today is the number of new faces we have in this developer community. It's incredibly important. And I do believe it actually is an image of the development of the drone industry. And I'm hoping that I'm going to go a little bit back in history, that I'm, I'm hoping that some of these learnings will be useful to you as you build your first systems. The drone industry has gone really through three phases. First, we in the open source domain did compete with DJI. We clearly lost uh, because we started to build consumer drones um, after a few research years around 2013, 14. And there were consumer drones on the market running open source software back then. That was also the era when Intel and Qualcomm believed that the drone would be the next smartphone. So they were pouring hundreds of thousands and including investments, probably literally $100 million each into consumer drones. And we were wor working at this event with people from even Microsoft, Intel, Qualcomm, they were all positioning their computing platforms. And there was a little bit of a Intel versus Qualcomm chip war going on, um, all competing and racing to have the best adoption. And that happened because the thought was, well, OK, everybody's going to own a drone. So that's give or take 5 billion drones you can sell, massive market. You have to go for that. That didn't quite happen. Um, in terms of market scale, but also we were not competitive. Um, and uh, the leading Chinese company cho chose a proprietary avenue. Then the next generation was, I would say, the uh, commercial drone hype, 2015, 2018, where you could use drones for everything, crop spraying, agriculture, every excavator needed a drone, um, Cargo drones to some, to some degree, that didn't quite happen either. Um, it turns out you can inspect 5,000 wind turbines with 20 drones over the course of summer, three months. So now you can scale that up. Even if you inspect millions of wind turbines, you only need thousands of drones. That is not really a scale business. And so that commercial market is alive and kicking and Altarian as a company is actually really deep in the commercial market. We have a lot of really cool, impressive customers, including California Fire, the FAA, SpaceX, others, but it's not a massive market. Cargo came in a little bit. I still believe in drone cargo, but on a time scale that is way bigger than what Jeff Bezos announced. Was it 2013-ish? <laughs> and quite funnily, like Amazon is, of course, the one company that is um, not there at scale. Um, I think the major mistake was to not stay on the open source path. But what we're seeing today, and based on what I've heard, is the driver also not just for us as a company, but also for you, the national interest, defense security, a world that is at greater risk, that is driving again a wave of drone adoption and which leads to an inflow of new companies, new talent, new, new people into this space. And I don't want to go now very deep on that topic, but I want to share a little bit of an authentic perspective on that because I've been seven times to Ukraine working very, very closely with that. It is a personal mission uh, to defend democracies and the freedoms we enjoy. But it is not necessarily the mission for open source software because what we're building here transcends that. The same way as the buildup of the aviation industry in World War II 
did transcend World War II and gave us commercial aviation long term at massive scale. I believe that to be true for drones. And so on a 20, 30 year vision, what we have here is, what we're building here is the fundament of an industry that is still very, very immature. And I want to remind everybody here that aviation existed for maybe 30 years before it actually got its prime time. Computers existed for about 30 years. I'm personally now 17 years in. Um, I've stopped dressing like a developer because it's not credible anymore. I think I made my <laughs> last few uh, code comments a little while ago. And I think I've become an ambassador for open standards, open architecture, open source in different realms. Um, so I'm, I, I, I love to be here, this feels like home, but when I'm not here, I'm at the Munich Security Conference or briefing governments why proprietary solutions are not in the national interest. Today is also the time where we can make a big announcement what, in terms of our commitment to open source edutarian. We've been quietly doing about 50% of contributions to some of the major code bases here. So we've been always, over the past eight years, a very, very strong supporter. You will find a few of us here. So that's not new. We have kept that constant steady, but now we're doubling down. I don't want to call it an open source program office because that sounds like bureaucracy and slowing things down. Uh, we're announcing our open source task force today. And that is an internal dedicated team reporting to a dedicated <coughs> director that will focus on our engagement with you and is only centered around uh, the, the velocity of this developer community. And the code bases we're working together and we will look at the infrastructure targets there. This will include some internal resources, people that you already work with, um, but with more focus on that. We will also be looking to partner with external companies and developers to add to that. Uh, because for those of you um, who stay really focused on the code and are not like living in startup land too much, we've raised a $130 million Series B round in summer. We're shipping over 30,000 sky nodes in just two months. So we're now finally in the position to give back not just what we've always done, but at much grander scale. Uh, and we will do that. And I think that will help uh, here quite a bit because our people will do the stuff that is not fun. Maintenance, fixing bug, bugs, triaging issues, things that are, you know, like I would say, not very creative, it's not a new feature, it's not the cool stuff, but it is the stuff what matters. And things that you all have contributed to. And I would like to challenge the companies that are here to also do their share to that. By contributions to the uh, core maintainer eff uh, effort that Ramon talked about. Um, by emphasizing internally that community health is really crucial. And part of that work will be also that we will drive the next set of standards because as there is a very clear government interest in our industry towards open system architecture um, and there, there's really no credible forum for that just yet, we will double down on open standards and we will provide with the PX4 community with drone code reference implementations for that. And so you can think of all the interfaces and APIs that have been potentially missing. We, we work with like literally, I, I wrote the first version of MavLink 2007. That's a little while back. So, so it's time 
in a backwards compatible fashion to layer on top of that. And we will provide some of the firepower in terms of development bandwidth to make that happen because we've been talking about it for a while. We all were out of bandwidth and we now have the ability to do that. I'm really happy that we're in this position. Um, I think across the whole industry, this industry has never been more solid, had more potential, had real revenue coming in. I've been jokingly saying, like, for the people that stayed in the drone industry between 2015 and whatever, 22, they're seriously wrong. There's something seriously wrong with them, including myself. <laughs> Because it's just constant suffering without resources, without customers. Uh, I see some of you can really relate to that. But now it's different. Now it's scale. The scale will not go away. The problem sets we work on will not go away for the next two decades. This time, it's not a hopeful hype, but a demand that is very, very fundamental. And I'm very proud that we're contributing to the national interest, but not just the national interest, also to a lot of commercial applications. And it is fantastic to have so many new people to, have, uh, to be here today, because that is the, com uh, the, the potential we need to build on. And what Ramon said earlier, we're going to try to do a very good job of pulling you closer of bringing you on board with what we've been building over the past 17 years. And maybe from my perspective, one recommendation um, to the elders, so above 35, uh, in this community, like be open to new ways, new perspectives. Uh, we, I think, learned a lot of lessons and it's important to share these lessons. But then there's also, it's also kind of 2025 and the technology has evolved and the baseline we can build on has evolved. Uh, so I think it goes into, in both ways. I'll be here uh, for the next two days. I will try to speak to as many of you as possible. Please ask me questions. Ask me like maybe some of the war stories like literal war stories of recent or the war stories of the consumer drone or enterprise drone wars uh, a decade ago. Um, please share what you maybe find quirky about this developer community where you're like, why is it that way? And probably the, the answer is, well, we need to change that. And, and also try to approach this with an angle of like, what can you actually contribute in terms of improving infrastructure, adding new features, uh, pushing the boundary. And then maybe one last piece, and this will, this will probably be a session for our next developer summit that I'll do is, we need to get better and more professional at explaining to the companies that are contributing and come from, how do you leverage open infrastructure? And how do you build value on top? Because the answer is not your one special thing. I always have to um, laugh, and uh, th there has been a fantastic uh, tweet yesterday from one of our community members, when companies say like, oh yeah, they built their own flight controller, and look at my GCS, and look at all the cool things, and then you look at it and it's like, yeah, you know, I know exactly what's that and what's in there. And I think you have to be ambassadors to the companies and management that you come from to explain to them, here's how I can work with this developer community to improve infrastructure. And here's how we can differentiate as a company. And that's not mutually exclusive. So that's also a little bit of a challenge to all of you because that makes a healthy community to understand the identity of what is open and what is differentiated. Because proprietary software isn't bad, it's just bad if you're trying to make something proprietary that actually adds no differentiation. And a lot of what we work on here together just has to work, it has to work well, it needs to be open, 
for the end customer and it's not differentiating. So with that, enjoy the program for the next two days. Make sure to get to know each other. Make sure to figure out, instead of boiling the ocean of trying to improve all the maintenance issues we have and all the things we want to do, what is the thing you can do next week? Send a pull request, wrap up. Um, that's how you eat an elephant in small pieces. Don't forget that. That's my number one learning, uh, having done open source software development for a decade. Um, and also enjoy. And uh, that's a segue to invite you to the Mixer tonight. We're a really proud sponsor of the reception. Uh, show up, use that. And uh, I hope to speak to as many of you as possible over the next two days. Thank you for being here. It's really humbling. And I'm looking forward to the next decade. Thank you.